It is definitely different. In traditional the approach, we tended to say, well, we collect requirements, yes. we gather requirements right. with the connotation that we know already about those requirements. Yeah. But in Agile, it's not really the case. You tend to discover the requirement. They do emerge as your software develops. Mm -hmm. so you are not collecting them, you are discovering them. Change management is a bit different because you are not going then to be uh, doing your formal really uh, change process. Your scope in Agile is your backlog basically. So you are doing your scope management at the same time as your change management. So every time when there is a change, you are going then to be uh, grooming your product backlog, either with it, maybe with uh, some change request, some defects. So your backlog is basically your scope and change management. Your user stories are not really the requirement because when you look at the uh, the way really the uh, the user stories are laid out, you have the uh, the card where you write your user story. It's a really a simple really statement, mm -hmm. and then you have the conversation, and then you have your confirmation. So this simple life cycle is going to help you then to make that story to grow as a requirement. Right. So we cannot really say user story is the requirement because it will grow into requirements. All kinds of requirements that you used to have in traditional because, well, we had business rules. You are going then to have business rules as well as a type of requirement. You may have maybe some data requirement in the traditional. You, can, you are going then to have them because we cannot do maybe sometimes with data requirement. Mm. And you have the non-functional requirement, which are really the quality of services. Yes. Those are also important. Sometimes, well, they can be uh, represented as technical stories. Sometimes you can't if they really cut across really a release, for example. So there are different ways, but you have exactly the same type of requirement because this is basically what you need, really, in order for you then to, to deliver a product which really meets the needs of your stakeholders. There is a myth that, uh, well, in Agile we don't document. This is not really true at all. We document in Agile, but the difference between the traditional way of documenting and the Agile way is you have then to be smart about your documentations. You document only if it adds value to your customers. If you are, for example, also maybe on a project for a critical system, Sometimes you may need them to do some documentation mm -hmm. as well. Documentations should provide value. Who is going to tell you about the value? Your stakeholders, mm -hmm. your product owners. So they can say, well, that's enough for us. So it's them who are going then to tell us whether it's enough or not. So one thing that I would probably see where my requirements sit is my test specification, basically. This is one thing. And the other thing is maybe later on, when I have maybe then to cater for maybe a, a community of users, do I may probably need then to look at the user manuals. Mm -hmm. And this is where maybe I see more uh, value to document something to yeah. cater for the users.